These would be in any other day would be huge stories. Uh, first one here. This is extraordinary. Uh, this is in the FT. Most UK businesses are unsure they can survive the coronavirus. As you can see, construction, entertainment and food services among most pessimistic sectors. And bring up a quote here. Uh, the majority of UK businesses are not confident they have the financial resources to stay open during the coronavirus pandemic. According to an official survey, as data shows the economy uh, contracted even before the disease struck, which is very, very striking. According to the National Institute of Economic and Social Research, Economic Research Centre, the UK economy could shrink by 5% in the first quarter, which is particularly strange when you think that the lockdown didn't start until mid-March. Uh, and if the lockdown continues, by between 15% and 25% in the second quarter. Michael, this is, this is quite significant, isn't it? 59% of 4,600 businesses that replied to a survey didn't think they could continue operating through the crisis, which would indicate they won't see the other side of it to clarify those words. Yep, so there's two, I mean, there's there's two sort of facts you presented, and I think they're both very different in terms of how we should look at them. So in a way, a recession of between 15 and 25%, that's not a policy failure. That's something that we, we actually quite want to see, because what we want to see is economic activity dampening down. We want people to you know stop moving about so much, and that means that the policy is successful as far as businesses stop functioning during this period. Um, but that's very different to this idea that 59% of businesses think they might go bankrupt in this period because what the government, you know, have said they want to do, and I don't see that much reason to to not take them at their word on this, is to sort of freeze the economy and to have businesses survive until this this crisis is over when they can start when they can boot back up again and start functioning again. What it seems like. Um, with policy as it currently is, maybe that's because it's been based too much on loans and small businesses aren't, you know, interested in in taking on more debt. Um, when, you know, as as Bascar said, when they reopen, it's not as if people are going to buy twice as many meals afterwards. Um, so they've got a big black hole in their finances, which a loan won't fill. They need they need cash grants, um, and so it does seem like not only will we be freezing the economy over the next three six months, which is a good thing, um, but there will be many good businesses that that die. Um, over that same period of time, I mean, also no, it's really dramatic. Go bankrupt. Uh, well, they, yeah, they'll they'll expire. Um, they will they will no longer exist. I suppose. Yeah. That is. And if you look at as well, this is a, the important thing is we've not gone from like even healthy economic growth isn't even the right word. You know, even just like normal by the standards of the last 30, 40 years growth, two three percent per annum. Basically, towards the end of last year, we were zero percent growth. I mean, you could say that because investment was being held back because of Brexit or whatever. Um, but the first quarter to already see a contraction would suggest that we were sort of hovering at zero anyway. And this is a really important point, you know, the economic context within which this crisis has happened is already terrible. You know, there were already high street businesses going bankrupt. You know, already we had a, a housing crisis, not enough homes were being built. Uh, and so I think, you know, as we've said repeatedly, what this will do is intensify preceding crisis as much as be this kind of exogenous shock. That's the word we keep on using, which is a bit different to the 70s. You know, the oil crisis happened in the 70s. There was rising home ownership, rising living standards. This crisis happened in a very different environment uh, and a very scary one. Bring up a quote here from Paul Dales, chief UK economist at consultancy Capital Economics, said that February's contraction, uh, which is, you know, before March, look like the calm before the storm of a lifetime uh, because the coronavirus lockdown will, quote, mean that in March and April, GDP will fall at speed and magnitude no one has ever seen and no economy has ever experienced before. But as you've said, Michael, I suppose that's that's to be expected. And that's actually the intention of the lockdown. Yeah, I mean, that's a good thing. And I mean, as you say, you, you know, this crisis as it comes along will intensify um, pre-existing crises which, crises which sort of underlie the system. So indebtedness of firms and and firms with a lot of fixed cost in industries that might not be particularly profitable at this point in time. I think it is worth saying that it could also be an opportunity if the government is willing to take, you know, to adopt the right policies during and after this thing. So so one reason we'd ha we've had such anemic growth um, over the past decade is because of the high levels of indebtedness and low inflation, which means that those those debts don't go down. Um, even this is we talked about this when James Medway was on the show. Um, even you know moderate centrist figures, and um, like the director of the Institute for Fiscal Studies, is suggesting that one way um, that we might come out of this crisis is that you've got the government with with huge debts, and unlike in two thousand and eight when they try and get down those debts by 
um, cutting wages and cutting social benefits, they could decide to accept higher levels of inflation. So pump money into the economy, allow inflation to rise, and that would not only you know, lower government debts because they've become less less valuable, but also private debts. And so if if we do have a sort of refoundation of, of a Keynesian Keynesian model where we accept high inflation, that could I mean that that could resolve some of the contradictions of capitalism that we currently have. If 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 a new settlement is found, obviously that's there's going to be many people whose interests that doesn't serve, big asset holders. Mm. Um, and I mean the Tories will worry about the kickback that they might experience from from homeowners if they do that. Mm.